Today, 126 teams will be narrowed down to one, and they'll be playing in the worst conditions imaginable. Negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, up to 40 mile per hour winds, and snow all in their face. I've ranked and seeded each team based on their performance this past year, so all the regions are quickly being shown right now, and the round of 126 is starting in the southeast. Since Georgia gets a buy as the overall one seed, we're starting with an eight and nine seed facing off, but the conditions are clearly making it very difficult, as that should not have been a drop. Here with about 20 seconds left, they need to get a big play. Hopefully he can get out of bounds here. It looks like he stopped short and time is ticking by very fast. It is fourth down and the open receiver drops the ball. So Baylor wins the first game. Well, 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 look at that. We have our first upset on the horizon and Sam Hartman's done a good job trying to get Wake Forest back in it, but they have to get the onside kick here to have a chance still and the Hokies are gonna recover it. A 12 seed knocks out a five this early on. And now for the first time ever, there's a ton of snow in South Florida. In the end, UTEP did not put up a good fight at all and the next game was even more boring than that one as Oregon dominated all day. Fortunately this next matchup should be good and it sure was as with a minute left East Carolina was down by five so they had a chance to come back but they would need to start moving the ball fast and they are slinging it deep. That is a huge bomb. Number five takes it into the end zone and CJ Johnson just changed everything for them. I honestly thought Vanderbilt was going to pull off the upset but now it's not looking as likely. Mike Wright, I don't know what you're doing here. He trucks a guy, he finds the open receiver, and now there's a flag bringing it back. That is so unfortunate. Oh my gosh, they just got another one. And now they have to go like 99 yards. I don't get this at all. They have blown the entire game. Mike Wright takes the safety, he fumbles it, that's it. East Carolina beats the SEC team. And then in the blizzard, Oklahoma State held the Eagles to zero points. With Tulane comfortably beating New Mexico in this one, that wraps up the Southeast region for now. So now we're in the Northwest and we are just getting started. Washington Washington should be pretty used to this weather, so it's no surprise they railed 16 seeded Colorado State. This result surprised me considering how well Kansas did the last time I did a 126 team playoff, but they got put out in the first round, and now we get to see if Utah State's Logan Boner can give Purdue a hard time. With less than a minute left, his team was trailing the Boilermakers by three points, and I highly doubt he's going to be able to pull anything off. There it is. There's the interception. He's surprisingly been dysfunctional today, and so was the Bowling Green offense, who didn't score any points until the fourth quarter and by now it's too late to come back. There's only been one upset so far and since UTSA plays in a dome they had to play their game at a neutral site outside. Unfortunately for them that meant they didn't get their home field advantage and they're on the verge of being upset by UNLV this is going to be a first down he's getting down to the five and will the 14 seed pull off the upset that's going to be a touchdown. And it doesn't even matter. They had someone slip on the play. Obviously though, UTSA will still have their chance and all they need is a field goal. So I feel like they're gonna get down the field and get that. Frank Harris finds the receiver, but since he stepped out of bounds so soon, it is fourth and eight. They have to pick this up and they're gonna drop it. UNLV is gonna pull off the upset. And now Indiana, an 11 seed, is trying to shock the world as well. They've done a great job of containing Malik Cunningham today but now they're giving up huge plays and that's gonna lead to Louisville tying it up. However, Dexter Williams has almost gotten Indiana in field goal range and all they need is one big play, but they're gonna run it, send it to overtime and they deserve to lose. It is third and seven. Louisville already scored on their first drive and there's the interception to seal the game. The Cardinals defended their home field in the end and it looks like we are gonna have another game with a close finish. UAB is the lower seed as a 10, but I think they can pull away. They need to get the ball out and I probably shouldn't have said anything. It's going to be hard to convert on fourth and 17 and they're obviously not going to get it. They are going to hold Marshall to just three though, so believe it or not, they do have a chance. Well, with about 10 seconds left, it's looking like nothing's going to come out of this. They are going to get to a spot to have a chance at a Hail Mary, and they just need to spike it real quick. Oh my gosh, what did their quarterback just do? I mean, their odds weren't great there, but they could have at least gotten off a play. In the last matchup of this region, the Beavers took care of business, so that's it from the Northwest for now. Here in the Great Lakes, Michigan started off with a 20 28 point win and Ohio was very close to beating Memphis. They are the higher ranked seed technically, but I'd still consider them underdogs. They are at home, which is a nice advantage. 
They do need one more stop though, and that interception is gonna seal the game. The Bobcats move on to play Michigan, and now Virginia is trying to shock everybody. They are the 12 seed, and they are beating Ole Miss. Jackson Dart just hasn't been great today. He is not gonna get the first down, and time is winding down. It is fourth and four. He throws it, and it is incomplete. Ole Miss is getting eliminated, and so is Navy after letting Fresno State run through them. UCLA should take care of business against Western Michigan, but I might have spoken too soon. The Broncos have a three-point lead with a couple minutes left, and their defense has done a good job today. It is first and 10, though. UCLA trying to get in field goal range. That is a massive truck down to the 50. He literally ran right through them. It is going to be hard to kick with the winds being this fast, so they do need to get in close range. And Western Michigan is so close to pulling off the upset. They're the 14 seed, but they're giving up a big play, and it's looking like they're going to need a money drive, unless they can pull off the miracle, which really isn't that far-fetched. It's already third and nine. They get the sack, and of course, UCLA is going to tie it up here. But the Broncos still have a chance to get a field goal of their own. They are being pretty aggressive, and I don't think this game is over. They're going to get another 10 yards here, so if they can get this hell Mary to work. Overtime will be off the table. Their quarterback slings it. He gets it almost far enough, but it is going to be intercepted. And here in the third overtime, they're going to need a touchdown along with the two-point conversion, which could be possible right here. Their quarterback is going to take off. Is he going to be fast enough? He's knocked short. They came so close to pulling it off, but they just couldn't do it. And since Syracuse normally plays in a dorm, they also had to play outside, but they easily took care of business. Technically, this one is going to count as an upset, but I don't think Georgia Tech winning this is much of a surprise. And all of your attention needs to go towards this game right now. Temple is a 15 seed, and in these high winds, they're about to attempt to tie it up their kicker is going to drill it. And with these teams trading touchdowns back and forth, this could go to overtime, which is definitely going to happen considering Kansas State just killed off all of the clock. I don't know why they didn't try to get in field goal range, but I think it's going to knock them out. And after committing a dumb penalty, this is certainly not a gimme. Their kicker is going to nail it, but Temple still has a chance to win. All they need is a touchdown. And of course, they couldn't do anything, so they're kicking, and he missed it. Oh my gosh. I think the wind actually took this ball here it just went wide and that's how the Great Lakes region is going to end for now on to the southwest now where Alabama is going to be 16 seeded Charlotte however the next one is going to have a good ending and that's because it's all going to come down to the last drive western Kentucky has their chance with a minute left they do need to start moving the ball though and that play was nice but they're still going to need about 70 yards I can't tell how many exactly that's going to be an interception that is it. I was going to say I couldn't tell the yardage because of the snow, but it's over anyway. Iowa State came up clutch, and now Air Force, who is a five seed, has to rely on their defense to close out this game. I really don't think Rutgers has it in them, especially because they're running with 30 seconds left, and now it's fourth and four. I didn't understand that play call at all, and since their receiver couldn't get his feet in bounds, Air Force is going to get the win. NC State made sure their game wasn't a contest, and I'm sure Mississippi State fans wish they could have done the same because this should not be close. With about a minute and a half left, Georgia State is only down by five, and they're a 14 seed going on the road, playing in a blizzard, so pulling this off would be incredible. I don't know what their quarterback's doing, but in the past two plays, he's just ruined their chances completely. He took three sacks in a row, that's it. I should have never even said anything. Honestly, we've been blessed with a ton of close games recently, and this one is going to continue that trend. Cal could get a touchdown and win the game. Their quarterback just threw it all the way down the field, and he did get pretty lucky that it wasn't an interception, but he is willing to sling it. The biggest issue is his team does not have any timeouts, so they need first downs to stop the clock. And with about 35 seconds left, they are inching near midfield. They are going to get tackled in bounds here, so that is going to run the clock. I think they're going to at least get an attempt at a Hail Mary off. They're down to about the 35, and now they're going to smartly spike the ball. Come on, hike it. What are you doing? Forgive me for calling Jack Plummer smart. He just wasted five seconds and that's going to be very costly. They're not even going to get a first down here. So the clock's going to run out. They're going to be eliminated and Arkansas is going to advance. It was certainly a rough day for the San Diego State offense as getting held to just five points is not a good time. And assuming USC wins here, the Southwest region isn't going to have a single upset at all. I mean, they can still occur in later rounds, but for now we're on to the Plains region and Missouri 
is going to start it off with a huge win over North Texas. This one wasn't close. And then in the next game, Arizona State is going to pull off the upset. They're a 12 seed, but they just lost the ball here. Oh my gosh. The James Madison defender literally just choked. If he could have picked up this ball, his team would have had a chance, but he didn't. So instead, they're going to be eliminated. These 12 seeds are always a threat, and apparently 13 seeds are as well. Army is not out of this game yet, and if they score a touchdown paired with a two-point conversion, they could send it to overtime. All right, here they are, third and 14. That is a terrible play call to run it, but somehow the running back breaks free, and he is going down to the 20. Never mind, more like the 15. I can't see anything because of all the snow. It is a blizzard out here, but I just want to see a good game, and their running back gets the ball back. He's getting down to the one. They might need to just run the ball. When they pass it, it doesn't work, and now their quarterback takes a sack. So with 17 seconds left, he's getting drilled again. He loses the ball. No one's picked it up yet. And now with five, four, three, time is winding now on this play. Army's gonna fall short. And that was honestly a really interesting ending. If you watch the 126 team imperialism video, Ball State did well there, but they couldn't beat Notre Dame today. And now my Wildcats are playing. However, with a minute and a half left, they are losing to Nebraska. Nebraska of all teams. They better come back and win this thing. Because if they lost the most teams, I'd be okay with it. But Nebraska, really? That would just be embarrassing. It's not 2000 anymore. They are on fourth down all of a sudden. And it's all in Will Levis' hands. Fourth and 13. What's he going to do? That's a terrible read. Oh my gosh. I feel like we're the Titans right now. I mean, who checks down on fourth and long with the game on the line? Oh well, my Wildcats are out. And the Gators could be as well. They're only up by three. And San Jose State is very close to the end zone here. Their quarterback throws a dot. And here at the Swamp, Florida is actually in trouble with a minute left. AR-15. Almost threw a pick. And I remember watching a game very early in the year where they were comparing Anthony Richardson to Vince Young. And he does stuff like this. Back-to-back -back terrible losses for SEC schools. And will LSU bump that streak up to three? I mean, it is possible. Arkansas State, the 15 seed, only down by seven. And the Plains region has been by far the wildest region of them all so far. I mean, Arkansas State not out of it. And they keep consistently picking up first downs. I mean, this is very far from over. But I don't like that they're going to waste a down here with a spike. Well, this is it, boys. Fourth and three. They need to get a first down. Their quarterback finds the open receiver and he is making magic happen on this drive again with the dot. And I think this one is going to go to overtime. What a crazy game. The Red Wolves are gonna score on their first drive and Jaden Daniels has to respond back. It is third and nine. LSU is not gonna get anywhere. So it all comes down to this. Nine yards stands between the upset win and the running back makes a play. What a game this has become. Now it's fourth and four for Arkansas State. LSU scored on their next drive and they need to pick this up, which they do. And they are getting closer and closer to sending it to overtime number three. And they're going to need something here on fourth and goal. Their quarterback finds the open receiver, but he is going to be short. And that wraps up the Plains region for now. I highly doubt the Northeast will be that good, but we'll just have to see. Nevada technically does have a chance with 16 seconds left. They are a 16 seed. So obviously no one's expecting them to win this, but they could pull off the upset. Their quarterback chucks it and no one's near there. All right, on to the next where Arizona is trying to defend their lead with about 40 seconds left. They're up by five. And if you've seen the other versions of this tournament, you know that they could be good. The Wildcats are coming into this thing as a nine seed, but we know they don't play like that. And we'll see if they can hold on. About 15 seconds left, SMU around the 40. So we'll see what they can do with their last chance here. They're going for the Hail Mary and... That was almost it. I'm pretty sure one of their receivers dropped it there, and he's going to hate himself for that. I'm not quite sure why every game has been so close recently, but I'm certainly not going to complain about it at all. Boise State trying to defend their lead, and it's crazy to think about, but you can barely see their blue field today. Tulsa is moving the ball, and their quarterback just trucked a guy. If I'm a defender and I get bulldozed like that by the quarterback, I'm stepping off of the field. We'll see if he can do it again. He breaks the tackle. He goes for 12 yards. And I am now a Davis Brin fan. I hope Tulsa can pull this off. What a throw by him right there. Just incredible. He's done everything his team's asked him to do. He is going to find the receiver, but he drops it. So they're just going to have to settle for three. And Boise State's going to have a chance to get down the field and avoid overtime completely. However, they're simply just going to settle for it anyway, which was a terrible decision decision since they're only going to get three in OT and Davis Brin is going to go for the win. He hands it off. His running back gets in and Tulsa pulls off the upset as a 12 seed. It looks like Duke is going to avoid losing to the Red Hawks. They've done a pretty good job today getting the stop here on fourth down and I'm sure South Carolina fans wish their team did better because it should never be this close against Kent State but at least they took care of business in the end anyways unlike some other SEC schools. Here's an upset that wasn't really close. Frank Gore Jr. had a great game and his 11 seeded team is going 
going to take down six seed South Alabama. This is how the Northeast is shaping up, and it's going to end with Oklahoma annihilating Appalachian State. They dominated all day, and then Clemson beat Northern Illinois by 17 points in a solid win, leaving the Northeast looking like this. Now, we're over here in the Mid-South, and there's only two more regions left in the round of 126. TCU starting it off on the verge of being upset by a 16 seed USF. I mean, this is not good, but despite losing 14 yards, they do still have a chance. All it takes is one touchdown, and I don't think it's going to happen, but I will applaud the Bulls for putting up a great fight against TCU. What a throw. Hold on, boys. This thing's far from over. They could get to the end zone with one or two good passes now, and what a last second comeback this could be. Four seconds left. He airs it out, and it is going to be intercepted, unfortunately. In the next one, Auburn gave their best shot at Houston, but it just wasn't enough. And then we got another good ending. Buffalo is only down by five with about 30 seconds left. And I feel like at this point, I've seen so many five point games, but to me, that seems like a really weird distance in points. I can't think of the last time I saw a team with one like that. That's going to be an interception from the Bearcats that's going to seal the game. And so far, the Mid-South looks like this. Boston College ended up traveling to Minnesota and doubling the Gophers' score. And then after that, of course, there was another close game. Central Michigan only down by three. Their quarterback did turn it over here. But it's just the fact that all of these games have been so close. I mean, right now, boys, it is literally past 4 a.m. But I just want to at least finish filming the round of 126. Iowa and Louisiana is also going to come down to the final possession. And we'll see what the Raging Cajuns can cook up here on fourth and seven. Their quarterback gets it out, finds a receiver, and their comeback hopes are still very much alive. All I'm going to say is I would have caught this ball, but that just shows that the ridiculous conditions I've put in this tournament actually are making somewhat of a difference on the results. I mean, the Louisiana running back literally couldn't stay on his feet here, and we've seen kicks get missed because of the wind, so I think these conditions just make for a really interesting outcome that throw is not going to be complete. So Iowa holds on and I just realized how big of an upset that was for Boston College. I'm clearly getting tired. I didn't even notice they were a 13 seed, but the show must go on and it looks like we are about to get another very close finish. Miami came into this game as the 10 seed. So technically it is an upset if they win and they just got the interception to seal the deal. What an amazing play that was. And with Utah holding on to get a 10 point win over 15 seeded Louisiana Tech, this is what the Mid-South looks like. The East Coast is the last region in the round of 126, and Tennessee made sure they weren't getting put out early on. Another SEC school decided they wanted to cut it a little bit closer than that, though. With about 40 seconds left, Texas A&M is losing by three to Toledo, and Haynes King is not getting up. You gotta wonder what Jimbo Fisher is gonna draw up for the lefty backup quarterback. He's scrambling, he's getting nowhere, and where has the time gone? There's only 10 seconds left. They've gotta get a snap off fast here. They do have one timeout. They need to get in field goal range, and the backup gets to about the 45, but there's no way they can kick with 20 mile per hour wins, especially from this far. They're going to throw up a Hail Mary at the end, and that is going to seal the deal. Texas A&M gets put out in the first round, and I guess it shouldn't be a surprise since they were the lower seed. Five-seeded Texas Tech ended up putting out FAU pretty easily, and then we got another, yes, another close finish. It's one possession game, Rice only down by seven. So as a 13 seed, they could beat four-seeded North Carolina. I don't think it's likely, but we have to see what happens. Please let me go to bed. Let's see what they can do. They don't get the ball out. There is yet to be a higher seeded team in this region that's lost a game yet, and Quinn Ewers is going to continue that streak for Texas. He carried them to a 21 point win, and to his brother at Maryland, made sure Wyoming didn't get out of the first round. Whoa, 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 whoa. It is fourth and four. There is a chance for a huge upset here. Wisconsin is slinging it. That is an interception. This game's over. I didn't even realize it until there wasn't much time left. But 10 seeded Mill Tennessee State's going to pull off the upset. And that's going to be the only shocker in this region because it looks like, as a two seed, Florida State is going to take care of business against Northwestern. The round of 126 is officially over. And before the round of 64 begins, I have to tell you about Prize Picks, today's video sponsor. My favorite teams, Kentucky, the Colts, the Pacers, are all having some rough seasons. So I had to find a way to try and make their games more entertaining to watch. And what I discovered was I really enjoy using prize picks to try to predict over or under on certain player stat lines. You combine it in with multiple different picks, and if you're right, it definitely pays and makes up for the fact that your team just can't win. If you want to join me over on prize picks, code board or the first link in my description will double your initial deposit up to $100. And since it's available in over 30 states, along with having almost every sport, you might as well use code board and give it a shot. Now we can actually begin the round of 64 and join.
Georgia's first game is going terribly for them. They're about to lose to Baylor, and at this point, there's nothing they can really do about it. I mean, Stetson Bennett can try to get his team into the end zone, but it's pretty much over, and that seals it. Eight-seeded Baylor really just did that, and it looks like their opponent in the next round is going to be UCF. Here at the end of the third quarter, six-seeded East Carolina still has not scored on the Oregon Ducks, and obviously, they did not end up winning. So now we're on to the final game in the Southeast, and since Tulane missed their extra point, that gives Oklahoma State a chance to win with a touchdown, but they have to get there first. It is fourth and six. Spencer Sanders finds his receiver. He is going to get it past midfield, and that was a massive conversion right there. Now he's going to take off. He's going to get a solid seven yards, and he's just continued to work around this defense. He finds his receiver now. They're down to the 10, but it looks like the backup quarterback is in, so somehow in the span of like 20 seconds, Spencer Sanders got hurt, and now he has to rely on his backup quarterback to get him into the end zone, which he can't do. This is it. It is fourth and three. They hand it off and he gets in. Their kicker is going to take care of business. And I just realized the entire reason Tulane's in this position is because of the weather. Their quarterback though finds the receiver. They're inside the 40 and they might be getting near field goal range. Now, if their kicker can't make an extra point, how's he supposed to make it from here? I guess we're going to see. He gets the kickoff and this one is no good. I mean, it wasn't even close and I honestly can't even blame him. I mean, the wind just took that. So seven seeded Oklahoma State is moving on. Now we're back over in the Northwest and Washington's defense has made JT Daniels look atrocious. Their coach would rather punt than watch him throw the football, and I'm just glad this game is going to have a good ending. With less than a minute left, four-seeded Pitt is trailing five-seeded Purdue by four, and they are going to lose the ball here. That is going to seal the game. And what a big win for the Boilermakers. 14 seeded UNLV is up next. And Louisville is trying to crush their dreams of making it to the round of 32. But it's far from over. Just like the last game, it is a four point deficit with about a minute left. And they're trying to come back. But that is going to be the nail in the coffin. And whoever wins this game will be the next team that Louisville will have to take on. You gotta love how competitive everything's been. This is a two seed against a seven seed, and they're going neck and neck till the final whistle. It is fourth and seven here. Marshall's quarterback slings it downfield, and that is going to be game. The Northwest region is over for now, and I'm excited to see how the Great Lakes plays out. Somehow, eight seeded Ohio is still in this game, and if the Bobcats have a good drive here, they could win at Michigan. Here on third and one, they're just going to go with the handoff to pick up the first down and more, which is probably what they should do again here on third and two. They need to pick it up. There's a wide open receiver. He is down to the 35. And since they don't have any timeouts, getting out of bounds there was huge for them. Their quarterback slings it and he turns it over. Michigan is going to avoid being upset. And that is so unfortunate. It looks like 12 seeded Virginia is about to upset four seed Fresno State. And at this point, I can confirm it. They're going to be playing the Wolverines next. And we'll see if their remarkable run can continue. After going into triple overtime against Western Michigan in the last round, UCLA came out today and took care of business against Syracuse. They're going to be taking on Kansas State next, who has annihilated Georgia Tech. And that leaves the Great Lakes with four teams. The last region on the first half of the bracket side is the Southwest, and with less than two minutes left, the Crimson Tide are trailing Iowa State by 13 points. I don't know why they struggled so much today at home, but they didn't get a single touchdown until the fourth quarter, and that's almost another pick. It looks like they are about to get into the end zone, but they will still need to get the onside kick, and Bryce Young just fumbled it away. That's it. Alabama really just lost to Iowa State. I honestly have no words. The round of 64 has just been crazy so far, as we've already seen seen two one seeds get eliminated, which I'm sure NC State loves. Mississippi State and Arkansas State was honestly never much of a close game, and the last matchup in the region is USC versus BYU. I'd love to say it was a good game, but it wasn't at all. And so these are the last four teams in the Southwest. Now, we're over in the Plains region, and even though it's 7 a.m., I am finishing this recording, because after getting some caffeine in my system, I'm ready to do this all in one go without getting any sleep, and Ohio State is going to come out and comfortably beat Missouri. With about a minute left, 13 seeded Arizona State is winning, but Illinois is already in field goal range at this point, and they could even get a touchdown here. We'll see what happens. It looks like Chase Brown's wide open. He makes the catch and is stopped short, but he should get in here anyway. The Sun Devils could be in trouble, and it'll all come down to if their defense can get a stop on third and goal, which they get the interception. That is it. The 13 seed pulls it off, and they'll be playing the Buckeyes next. I don't know what's going on with college football revamp right now, but Nebraska's actually in this game, and they're going to take the 
lead here. Who would have thought they are coming out and playing great football and now they're getting a huge sack. So Notre Dame might be in trouble. I'm not sure why they didn't use one of their three timeouts there. They burnt through a ton of clock and they just must be sick of playing football in the snow. They didn't hike the ball until now. So they got rid of all the time on the clock and it can come down to this last play, but it's pretty much over. The Cornhuskers are going to move on. And the last game in the region is San Jose State at LSU. The Spartans could legitimately win this as well. They are going to take the lead here and that puts the Tigers in a tough position. They are down by four points and with only 51 seconds left to go like 80 yards down the field, it is a very daunting task for them. However, they do have two timeouts, so I wouldn't count them out, but flags like that will hold them back. They just can't afford to make mistakes like that and I don't know why they're running the ball. It doesn't make sense, but maybe they're sick of playing in the snow too and they just want to be done. That's a huge hit, and I think we're all starting to see the writing on the wall. This game is pretty much over. All 10 seeded San Jose State needs is one more stop on 4th and 25, and that is it. The Plains region really just went insane, and I doubt the Northeast will match that. Well, considering Penn State's losing right now, I'm going to take that back almost immediately, and that's because Arizona is like one first down away from sealing it. Here on 3rd and 12 now, picking this up would be absolutely crucial, and they are slinging it deep. Oh my gosh. It is held on to, and Penn State is actually done for. Upsets are occurring left and right. I don't know what is going on. We have another close game here with 12 seeded Tulsa, and if Davis Brin can lead them past 4 seeded Duke, that'd be crazy. It looks like they're not worried about draining the clock on 3rd and 6, and that is a first down. I mean, they're going with a little bit of an aggressive approach here. So now they're going to slow it down and send it to overtime. It could be, wait, 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 wait. They're not going to send it to overtime. If he makes it all the way, he gets caught. That would have been crazy. That would have been it. But instead, it's going to be an overtime battle. And here on fourth and one, if Duke does not get this, they'll be knocked out. The throw is up and it is knocked down. Tulsa continues the streak of upsets, and if I was a South Carolina fan, I'd be terrified. There have been five upsets in a row, and 11-seeded Southern Miss is trying to make it six. Knocking off three-seeded South Carolina would be huge, and they're getting close to it. All they need is about six more yards to take a four-point lead, and they're getting closer. Here on third and goal, we'll see if they can pull it off. It's a run, and it's a touchdown. Frank Gore Jr. gets it done, and Spencer Rattler is gonna get his chance to respond back but it's only about 32 seconds. I feel like from all the potential game-winning drives we've watched in this video, we kind of know what's going to happen. It just seems like most of the time, they can't pull off the drives, and it kind of makes sense why. They're on a time constraint, like right now, South Carolina is down to just eight seconds, and it's very hard to do, but that is a huge throw, and it's knocked down. It also makes the upset official, and is Clemson going to be a victim to all of these upsets? Wow, I am absolutely speechless. They have not scored a single point, and it's the fourth quarter. This entire region is about to have an upset in every game in this round and DJ Ugalele is trying but he can't do anything. Oklahoma is going to beat Clemson at Death Valley and the Northeast has made me speechless. I literally can't say the same thing won't happen in the Mid-South because I think we've witnessed seven upsets in a row now. Well someone had to end the streak and that someone is TCU. I think five-seeded Cincinnati is going to take care of business too. 13 seed Boston College did all right but they just didn't play good enough today and this is going to be the final play of the game. Welcome to the fourth quarter boys where Iowa hasn't scored a single point against Troy. I mean, it looks like they're finally going to figure out how to get into the end zone here. But even with Troy being a three seed, this is just embarrassing. And the worst part is here on fourth and one, they're not even going to get it. Three seeded Troy is moving on. And this is a great last game for the region. I mean, Miami does have a chance to pull off the upset. They are the 10 seed. It's fourth and six here. They are picking up the first down and he's down to the five yard line. Can Tyler Van Dyke get it done for the Hurricanes? There's still about two minutes left, but they have got to get into the end zone here and there it is. Now the ball is in the hands of Cam Rising. We'll see what he can do in response. And Miami's head coach needs to find a turnover chain as soon as possible. If he can motivate his guys to get a stop, that'd be huge. And Utah just drained the clock to about 20 seconds. Time is going to be very precious now. And that's a good play. They're getting closer and closer to field goal range. They still have all three of their timeouts. And this weather could have a huge impact on the final kick. Never mind. We're not going to get a final kick. I told you they needed to find the turnover chain and the U is moving on in the Mid-South region. To end the round of 64, we have to go back to the East Coast. And once again, Tennessee shows they're not messing around. Well, evidently, Texas Tech isn't either. I mean, they just steamrolled Carolina and Texas just did the same thing to Maryland. I mean, this game is not even close. So hopefully the round of 64 ends on a good note. Well, never mind. This one was a blowout too. So let's just get into the round of 32.
schedule. Starting in the Southeast, these four teams are up. And with a minute left, Baylor is trailing UCF by seven points. They're going to need a huge drive. And this ball is going to be picked off. That is going to end the game. So UCF is going on to the Sweet 16. And it looks like they're going to be matched up against Oklahoma State unless Bo Nix can pull off a comeback. Getting the onside kick here would be huge. And they actually recovered it. Oregon's odds of winning this game literally just flipped in an instant. Bo Nix has a chance to move on to the Sweet 16 himself, and all he needs to do is get his team in field goal range. Can he do that? He almost threw a pick, but he didn't. It wasn't held on to, and that Oklahoma State player will probably regret it. Third and two now, about 40 seconds left. They do have three timeouts, so they can kind of chill out for a bit, but they do need to snap the ball quickly. Or not. Why not waste 25 seconds before doing it? The AI in this game is so dumb. Now, it's fourth and two. There's only nine seconds left. They probably won't even get in field goal range with the wins like this. And we'll see if their kicker can pull it off. It is going to be good. Oregon is going to survive. And I can't believe Oklahoma State choked that. These are your two finalists in the Southeast region. And now we're going over to the Northwest where one seeded Washington annihilated Purdue. On the other side of the region, six seeded Louisville stunned two seed Oregon State by beating them by 23 points. And now these two teams remain in the Northwest. Now over in the Great Lakes, Michigan crushes Virginia's upset hopes. And it looks like UCLA is going to win as well. Georgia Tech has to pick this up on fourth down and it's it's just going to be an interception for Jeff Sims. So nothing too excited really happened here, but maybe something will here in the Southwest. Well, 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 look at how Iowa State's doing. They pulled off a huge upset against Alabama last time, and now they've knocked out four-seeded NC State. In the other game, Mississippi State is trailing to USC right now, but they're trying their hardest to come back, and it just turned to 10 a.m. my time, by the way. So if you've been paying attention, the light is now coming in from the window. I started filming at 1 a.m. It's been like nine hours now. I'm finishing this and Mississippi State has honestly made a good effort to come back but in the end the Bulldogs are going to be eliminated. Iowa State and USC are moving on and we're already halfway through the round of 32. It looks like Ohio State might be in a little bit of trouble against the Sun Devils. They're down by 14 and if 12 seeded Arizona State can pull this off that would be incredible. As long as they avoid taking a safety here they should be okay and I think the Sun Devils run is going to continue. What a win for the program and now we have a matchup of two double digit seeds. It is a good game, just like we expected. With 27 seconds left, Nebraska is trailing by seven. And that last play probably should have been a pick, but it wasn't. So Nebraska is still alive. It is fourth and seven. Their quarterback slings it, and he misses his target. That could have been it. He literally had everyone beat by five yards, but the missed throw sends San Jose State on. And at this point, all of these regions are crazy. In the first game in the Northeast, Tulsa is going to be put out by Arizona. And on the other side of things, Southern Miss does have a chance to take down Oklahoma, but they got to get the ball out here. And that safety is going to crush them. The two power five schools move on. And now I'm curious to see how the Mid-South shapes up. Unfortunately, this one was pretty boring. TCU is just going to make sure Cincinnati does not get to move on. And three Reseeded Troy is in trouble, especially because they're missing kicks. I mean, the brutal win just took that one to the left, and Miami is a 10 seed is going on to the Sweet 16. This is incredible for them. I mean, they're going to have a difficult game against TCU, but who knows what will happen? We have seen crazier. And another upset is on the horizon. Tennessee trailing by 10 with only two minutes left. They do get the first down there, but Hendon Hooker is going to have to get them down the field quick if they want to get back into this thing. And here on fourth and two, it could all be over if they don't get this, but they do. The only reason they're still alive is because they still have all three of their timeouts. They are not out of it, but they can't burn any of them, and I'm afraid they're going to use one soon. What I say, there goes the first timeout, so they have to get an onside kick if they score now, which is a lot harder to get. The receiver's pulling off moves, though, and that is exactly why you don't waste the timeout. Now Texas Tech recovers, and this thing is over. One seeded Tennessee is eliminated, and hopefully the round of 32 ends with a banger. Here we go. A minute 13 left. Florida State trailing by six points. They could go down, get a touchdown, and win, but they're going to have to go the length of the field without any timeouts, so they're going to have to pass the whole time, and one or two sacks, and all of their hopes are ruined. You can't make any mistakes at this point, as I was saying, and drops like that is exactly what I'm talking about. You can't expect to win if you can't go out and make basic plays in these crazy conditions. Here on fourth and five, now Jordan Travis steps back and he cannot connect with his receiver. So Texas is one of the final two teams in the East Coast region. I've gone ahead and put the remaining teams in one last bracket. So it's time to start the Sweet 16. It looks like it's going to start with a surprise already. Oregon's down by nine and the wins are so bad that instead of taking their three, they have to go for it on fourth and five and they are going to get it. But time is not on their side. They're still trailing by two possessions and 
they're probably about to burn a timeout. That was smart of them. They hurried it up. They didn't use one. Good move. But now they get the first down and even though the clock stops on a first down, they still wasted one. Now they have to get the ball on the onside kick and UCF is going to recover it. So they'll be moving on to the Elite Eight. I have to say, Washington has had a pretty incredible tournament. They did come in as a one seed, but they're getting big wins. And at this point, they have to be a favorite. I think this one's setting up for a good ending here at the big house because with less than two minutes left, we have a one possession game and UCLA is moving the ball. DTR is taking his brooms all the way to the Sweet 16 and he wants to get him to the lead eight, but he just turned the ball over. I should have never praised him. That was really dumb. But UCLA is not out of it yet. They can still get three stops. And that is exactly why you hold on to all three of your timeouts. They're going to get the ball back and they have one last chance to get the win. It's time to see what DTR can do in the clutch. He's finding receivers, and Jake Bobo's had a really good game today, going for 97 yards on six catches, and he just gets another one. He brings it in. He's going down inside the 15. Never mind, that was a completely different guy, but it doesn't matter. As long as UCLA's down the field, they have their chance. We're getting a good game. DTR just gets it out, and this one is going to end as a nail-biter. It is third and 10. He slings it to the receiver, and he drops it. With 30-mile-per-hour wins, these conditions are brutal. It is very cold. It's hard to catch it. That's going to be knocked down, and Michigan moves on to the Elite Eight. Nine-seeded Iowa State has had a great run so far in this tournament, and it could continue, but they're going to need to come back in the final minute, which is going to be incredibly difficult to do on 4th and 11. That's a bad read, and USC gets to move on. The Sweet 16 is already halfway over, and now we have two double-digit seeds facing off. Both of these teams have had great runs, and it's going to come down to a defensive stop. Oh my gosh, San Jose State just got the defensive stop they needed. They forced the fumble. He's taking it back all the way to the house. I thought they were going to have to burn through their timeouts to get that stop. That's insane. Arizona State was literally about to just run through the clock, and now they have to go down and score to stay alive. In all like 500, 1,000 games I've watched, I've never seen a play on defense that's turned something around like that. If you all have made it this long in the video, that is a treat for you all. That's a huge hit. And this San Jose State defense is out for blood. I mean, they still do need to get a stop. Arizona State could get in field goal range, but they're getting sacks. And now it's third and 19, 28 seconds left. That's gonna be a nice little pass. Oh my gosh, he breaks a tackle. He gets to the 50. What a twist that was as well. They need to hike the ball. Come on, 13, 12. You've got to get down the field. Their quarterback takes off. He's going to get caught. And instead of losing their final timeout, they're just going to try to spike the ball. That is going to be game. Time expires. So what a result that was. Well, I don't know what it is about this Arizona team, but they always seem to do very good. They're up by seven against Oklahoma with about a minute and a half left. So we'll see if the nine seed can upset the seven seed on the road. But for some reason, I think Dylan Gabriel is going to get the Sooners into the end zone. I think that it's going to go to overtime. And that should make for a very interesting game to watch. That is good defense there, though. So here we go. It's fourth and nine. It is all on the line here. They have to pick it up and they are going to convert. The Sooners are staying alive. They still need to get about 40 yards and that's going to be a huge chunk of it. He's going to get down to the five and then they're going to commit a dumb penalty. Twice the distance from the end zone. Now it's a little bit harder to score. Dylan Gabriel breaks the sack and he finds the receiver. What a great play from him. And what did I tell you all? I think it's going to overtime. Oh my gosh, that's a pick. Arizona's quarterback might've just blown the game for them. Oklahoma could win. That's an amazing throw. Dylan Gabriel finds Drake Stoops in the end zone. And what a turnaround we have witnessed. I think Arizona is done for now. That is another interception. Oklahoma survives at home. And that's going to be a very hard game to top. In all honesty, I thought the Hurricanes were going to put up a better fight than this. But they just could not stop TCU's offense. Well, this is now the last matchup in the Sweet 16. And from here on out, every game will be played on a neutral site. Texas Tech just didn't put up a good fight today and I'm ready to see who the last team standing is. Surprisingly, UCF has dominated so far, and if Washington wants to win, they're going to have to pull off a 17-point comeback. Getting a stop here on third down would definitely be a start to that, which they do, and all of a sudden, it would be foolish to doubt Michael Penix and the Huskies. If they can get into the end zone fast enough here, they still have a pretty good chance, and on second and six, they need a big play here, but that's going to be a sack, and that's going to hurt their odds of winning this game a ton. They should be taking a field goal here to make it a one-possession game, but they're going for it, and they're not going to get it, so UCF is on to the Final Four. Michigan and USC is setting up for a great finish. The Wolverines do need to get a defensive stop, which they're going to get, so with two minutes left, they're going to get a chance to tie it up, and I'm curious to see what J.J. McCarthy can do here. With it being third and 13 already, it's not looking good for them. Not a great start to this offensive drive. Another drop, and the good thing is they were able to punt it back and use all their timeouts to get a stop, but even though that's gifted them another chance, I don't think they're going to take advantage of it by running here. I mean, that play call made no sense. No timeouts, third and 17. The blitz gets in, 
and that's gonna be it. USC is moving on, and we're already halfway through the Elite Eight. On the other half of the bracket, Oklahoma is losing to San Jose State, the 10 seed, with a minute and a half remaining, but I definitely would not count out Dylan Gabriel from what we've seen so far. He's had a near-perfect game, 21 for 30 for 250 yards and like three touchdowns, He's running here, but it seems like the guys surrounding him, like his defense, just haven't done their job today. That's why they're in this situation. And if San Jose State can survive and make the Final Four, that would be insane. I know Oklahoma's technically an underdog too as a seven seed, but they are a much bigger school. And now they're like 18 yards shy of the end zone. That's a bad drop, but that also stops the clock, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Another first down here. He's down to the two, and they are so close to scoring the go-ahead touchdown. 14 seconds left now. Dylan Gabriel steps back. Finds his receiver, he drops it. The weather conditions are getting to them now. They're gonna hand it off, he's gonna get in. And San Jose State fans are crushed. They played so well here at Arrowhead Stadium and they're gonna have to leave with a loss. But their run in this tournament was incredible. And now the last spot in the final four is on the line. It's the fourth quarter and it has been all Texas all day so far. It looks like TCU's finally gonna score here, but it is too late to start a comeback. It's a 21 point deficit. This thing is over and the final four is officially set. The first matchup is USC versus UCF. And at this point, I've skipped a whole night of sleep. It is almost 12 o'clock, but I was determined to make sure I finished this video in one sitting. And here at the end of the third quarter, it is honestly not looking very good for the Knights. They are down by 17. They need to score fast because if they don't, they're going to be eliminated. They are going to start the fourth quarter by finding the end zone, assuming they can get in. But now that it's third and five, I am a little skeptical. We'll see what they can do. They're taking a sack. It's a fumble. What is going on? UCF is just a bit outmatched and they're not even taking the field goal to cut it to two possessions. I don't understand this. They do get the touchdown though. So the aggressiveness does pay off and they're going to get the ball back. With two minutes left down by 10, a comeback isn't likely, but it is possible with three timeouts. And who am I to doubt UCF at this point? They have made it this far in the tournament. So maybe they do have a little bit of magic left in them. We will see. That's a bad sack though. And it feels like all the momentum they've been building up on this drive just got crushed. That is going to be a great throw. Hang on, if they can get into the end zone quickly, this is very, very far from being over. Kobe Hudson with back-to-back -back huge catches, and now they're going to get to the two, but it's very important if they don't get in, they don't waste one of their timeouts. The running back takes it. It's 21-24. UCF is not out of it. The onside kick is going to get recovered by USC, but all they need is three stops on defense. They have all their timeouts. That's huge. And the 17-point comeback is still possible. The read option is going to get a few yards, but it'll all come down to this one play. Travis Dye gets to the outside, and that's a first down. What an effort by UCF, though. They really had a great tournament run, and now we're getting the Red River Showdown in the other Final Four matchup. Texas has had a hard time scoring in these conditions, and that's why with about three and a half minutes left, they only have three points. They are going to fortunately get the first down here, which is huge, and they should finally get into the end zone too, which they do. Now, it'll all come down to if they can stop Oklahoma, and that's going to be a drop. That's a big stop. Texas is very much back in this. Two minutes left. They have the ball, and B Legion Robinson's been ruled out for the game. So that makes some sense because I was wondering where he was at. This is a very important third and eight here. Quinn Ewers, what are you gonna do? You're gonna only check down, which really puts all the pressure on this one play where you find Xavier Worthy for the first. I mean, that was just a great read. He handled the pressure well, and he kept his team in the game. That is very important. Now he's slinging it again. That's gonna be down to the 40. What a throw there. The defender would have never seen it coming. He was faced the other direction, and there is the turnover that he could not have what are you doing? This is why Arch Manning is coming to Texas, to replace you, because you're no good. Ohio State didn't want you. Texas isn't going to want you now. Oklahoma's going to win, and they're going to be going on to the championship game. It all comes down to this, and I've been doing this for 12 hours straight to see who the best team in a blizzard is. Oklahoma's definitely the underdog. They're coming in as a seven seed, but due to the weather, points have not come easy today, and he's going to be stopped short, yet they still have to go for it because they can't trust their kicker from this far out. And what a broken tackle. That's going to save it. He's fighting. What a move. He literally injured someone in the process. And Eric Gray just saved the day for the Sooners. USC ended up getting a score of their own. But right before halftime, it looks like Oklahoma might get into the end zone again. So we're going to see if they can do it. They are going to get a first down. What a run here by Dylan Gabriel. He gets down to the five. And he's been really fun to watch all tournament. He has carried this team on his back. And... He just threw a costly interception. I shouldn't have been hyping him up. And for an entire quarter after that, nobody could do anything. It is now the fourth. It is seven to seven still. And honestly, for a championship game, this one has been incredibly boring. Teams have been scared to kick because of the wind. They can't throw it far because of the wind. And now they're just taking sacks. I mean, these are brutal conditions, but we wanted to see who the best of the best was. And with three minutes remaining, these teams are neck and neck. 
Dylan Gabriel finds his receiver. He's going to get down to the 15 and they're attempting the field goal. All the jerseys are white because the unit hasn't been out there yet. It is good. He actually nailed the kick and now Caleb Williams has to respond back. Travis Dye is going to get the first down. Plenty of time left here. There's still about two and a half minutes, so they don't have to have a sense of urgency, but they should be mindful of the clock because you don't want to give it back to Oklahoma with too much time left, especially if you get a field goal. And even then with how this entire game's gone, you cannot rely on any points. Nothing can be guaranteed. I mean, the wind is blowing at 25 miles per hour right now. So it's like, it's just hard to move the ball. All right. This is a big third and one. They're going to go with the jet sweep and that's going to be a first down easy. They're draining the clock. They're creeping in the field goal range. This is setting up to be a perfect drive to win it all until they take the sack. And Caleb Williams knows better. He has got to get that ball out there. This entire drive has just collapsed in a matter of seconds. They only have two timeouts left now. That's a drop. And these conditions really are brutal. It all comes down to this. Fourth and 19. Caleb Williams steps back in the pocket. He doesn't get it out and Oklahoma is going to win it all. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you made it this far, make sure to smash that like button to support the channel and my efforts.